Hey everybody, welcome to the first video for Quarter Bin Comics. Um, thought I'd start with some more produced content, but I need to test out my equipment and uploading to YouTube and, you know, in general, just build up the content. So I'm starting with this instead, because um, I got this in the mail. I got a pretty good deal on eBay the other day and figured it was a pretty cool thing to talk about and I could do kind of an unboxing. So what we're looking at right now are... Um, a pair of something called the Comico Collection, which is a box that Comico put out. Uh, it was on store shelves in comic shops uh, November of 1987. It was to celebrate the five-year anniversary of the publisher. And uh, eh, honestly, it's interesting. Um, it's got a bit of an interesting history to it. So the box itself, you can kind of tell where Comico was at as a company. Um, they... They struggled and were around until the mid-90s, um, but really they started having major issues kind of by the late 80s, and I think by 1990, the company as we knew it had pretty much folded. Um, so what you see here at the five-year anniversary, they were still really going strong, but um, this box kind of shows that the cracks were starting to show. So what... Is it exactly? Um, well, here, this is uh, the paper that comes on the back of it. And I'll just read this to you really quick. So the Comico Collection, here's what you get. A deluxe silver embossed slipcase, specially designed by Matt Wagner and perfect for any Grindel enthusiast bookshelf. And that's true, it is a nice looking uh, little box. Um, the reason I got it actually is to uh, put my Comico run of Grindel comics in. I figure I'm... Uh, it fits about 10 comics, 12 comics per box. And uh, the original run of Volume 2 was 40 issues long. So I figure I'm going to put my entire run into these boxes because it would be kind of fun to have them on the shelf. Anyhow, so number two. An all-new 16-page comic written by Matt Wagner and illustrated by Dean Motter of Mr. X fame. Featuring Hunter Rose, the original Grindel persona, and the story is presented on glossy paper stock and printed in black, white, and red. The comic will not be made available anywhere else and can only be obtained by purchasing this collection. It's a stunning first-time collaboration between these two highly respected creators. And that's true. It's uh, outside of Comico Primer number two, which was the first appearance of Grendel and the original three-issue miniseries. Um, it's one of the more expensive and one of the rarer Grendel comics out there. I mean, that said, it's only, I think, maybe 20 bucks near mint, and you can find very fine copies for under $10. Um, this is the comic. It's, uh, it's interesting because it doesn't even have a proper cover. It just kind of gets started right on the cover, and it continues onto the back cover where the, um, uh, where the credits also are at the bottom of the page. Um, it's a pretty decent just little side story. It's a little vignette. Um, that kind of shows the brutality of Hunter Rose. Uh, and it's actually true what they said in the back of this. It wasn't reprinted until uh, the Grindel Omnibus came out, uh, and the story did appear in Volume 1 of the Grindel Omnibus because it's considered the first Grindel black, white, and red story, which there were actually two miniseries, I believe... Most or all of the stories were written by Matt Wagner, and then they were illustrated by other artists. And they were printed in black and white with little red touches. Um, it's a pretty cool series. Uh, pretty much all of them, I think, are Hunter Rose stories. And they kind of flesh out the character a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a bit of an aside. So anyhow, the next part. Uh, it comes with 10 Comico back issues. You're guaranteed that at least one of each of the following will be included. Johnny Quest... Robotech, the Macross Saga, Grindel, Robotech Masters, Elementals, Star Blazers, Robotech the New Generation, and Justice Machine. Originally priced at $1.50 each, um, each comic contains 32 pages of story and beautiful four-color artwork and is presented using state-of-the-art production techniques. Many of these titles are critically acclaimed. Two have received Kirby Award nominations, the industry's higher honor, or highest honor. Here's a chance for you to sample our entire line of comics and see what you've been missing. So, and the truth about this is, this is where it gets kind of junky. Um, the truth is, these boxes really were just to unload their back stock in a lot of ways. Um, and the reason that we know that, there's unsourced rumors on the internet that when these things came out in November of 87, that they were sold 
to comic shop retailers for $2 a piece. So, and you'll notice here at the bottom that they were sold for $10 each. So they gave a pretty hefty discount, like much greater than, than the normal um, discount, which I think in general, uh, comic shops are paying half of the cover price of a comic, unless there's some kind of special promotion going on. So these were obviously on a special promotion, and it was mainly to blow out back stock of overprinted issues that Comico had sitting in their warehouses. Um, <clears throat> Anyhow, moving on. Uh, number four, a beautiful full-color Comico wall poster. And this is true. It's actually a pretty nice poster, um, as you'll see in a minute. And a copy of the informational newsletter, Comico Attractions, which features exclusive artwork from upcoming projects. And that's not really true. Um, it has artwork from upcoming projects, but it's all basically work that's in those books. So I guess if you consider that exclusive, then it is. Um, so anyhow, that's what's in these. Um, as I mentioned, I got them off of eBay. Uh, I feel like I got a pretty good deal on them. It wouldn't be quarter bin comics if I didn't get a good deal on them. Um, somebody, I guess, had a warehouse find of these. And I got the last two that they had in the lot um, for a little over $5 each. Um, and a little over $10 shipping. So... When all is said and done, I paid about what this thing originally came out for um, in 1987. So adjusted for inflation, I got it for like half price. But yeah, let's take a look at what is inside them. Um, I'll show you, well, I guess we'll open the one that has the plastic on it. And then I'll show you the comics that are in the one that's I've already, uh, that I already opened. Um, so I figure there's no point in keeping this in the plastic any further because, as you can see, this is the condition it came in, and it's pretty disintegrated. So uh, it makes sense. I mean, this plastic's 32 years old. I'm sure that nobody was planning on these things sticking around for 32 years, let alone being in the original shrink wrap for that long. So let's just get this off of here. as best we can. This is the side where it's disintegrated, unfortunately, kind of along the cheap leather that they used to wrap it in. I mean, it's, uh, for what it is, for a, for a, a comic book tchotchke from 1987 when the direct market was kind of still pretty new itself. The direct market was only maybe six or seven years old. Um, a, a cardboard box wrapped with Silver embossed cheapo leather is, you know, it's a pretty nice collectible, I guess, for the day. So that's what the back looks like. Um, it's just plain, kind of plain black. In the front, as you can see, is, uh, as it said on the tin, um, silver embossed with a Matt Wagner design. Um, it says Grindel Comico Collection on it. So obviously, they were expecting people to stuff their Grindel comics in it, which, you know, as I mentioned, is the reason that I got this, was to stuff my Grindel comics in it, now some 32 years later. Um, the reason they were probably planning that is because Grindel is one of the truly standout series from Comico from the very beginning. So he had his origins in Comico Primer number two, which is actually the second comic that Comico ever published. It came out in late 1982. And in early 1983, um, his miniseries got started, his first miniseries. I have, that uh, I have it around, but not handy to put on screen, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so, um, so Grendel kind of started with a miniseries and had a bit of success. And then... Uh, they started a main Grindel series that the first 12 issues were drawn by a couple of young artists, Arnold and Jacob Pander, and it was written by Matt Wagner. Uh, that series ran, it ended up running for 40 issues, pretty much the length of the health of Comico, um, and it was one of their highest sellers. So that, along with um, the first book in the three-volume Mage series from Matt Wagner, uh, Mage the Hero Discovered, um, and Elementals were probably the, the biggest, most endearing or enduring books 
from Comico and the only ones that people talk about nowadays. Um, a lot of their bread and butter, as you heard when I was reading that list, though, were uh, licensed titles, like especially the three uh, Robotech series that they had, which those ran for about 30 issues each. Um, so those books were all pretty, pretty big for Comico before things went south. I unfortunately have not researched enough to be able to tell you how they went south, and I was young enough at the time that like, I wasn't really aware of what was going on other than that I didn't see their books on the shelves anymore. Anyhow, enough of uh, that history. Let's take a look at what's in this box. So the first thing that you'll notice is that it's wrapped in a poster, and we'll take a look at that at the end. Um, it's a pretty cool poster. It's pretty big, too, though. And then this is an interesting thing to me. Um, it also, in my mind, shows kind of where the health of Comico is at, which is the very first thing that you see when you open or when you uh, unbox this thing is even though you bought it at a comic shop at, at Direct Market, Comico is enticing you to cut out the middleman and subscribe to their books and buy them directly from them. Now, why would they do that? Um, because, because <laughs> they need the money. Um, so after that, we have, as advertised, an issue of Comico Attractions. Um, and this is actually not the latest issue. This was one from the month before. In fact, here we can see it's advertising, uh, the Comico collection. Um, I have to say that I really like the advertised version a bit more than the final one. Uh, because the final version, as you can see, the... The Grindel image is not full page the way that it's advertised here. Let's see what they have to say about the, the Grindel collection, because I haven't actually read this before, or about the Comico collection. Uh, the Comico collection, a one-time only, specially priced deluxe package containing 10 different Comico back issues, a Comico poster, a copy of the latest Comico attractions, which that's not true. This is actually the one from the month before. Although, as we'll see in the other one that I got, it did come with the latest issue of Comico attractions. Um, <clears throat> an all-new 16-page Grindel comic written by Matt Wagner and illustrated by Dean Motter and collected in a Wagner-designed Grindel slipcase. And this is also the month that Comico Black Book came out, which this was the other kind of five-year anniversary celebration. Um, and here's what it has to say about that. I don't have a copy of that handy to show you, otherwise I would. It's mostly a text comic. I mean, it's, it's in comic book form, but it's pretty much all, it's like a magazine. It's all text. A special fifth anniversary celebration featuring an index of your favorite Comico titles presented in the popular universe format with new art and writing as well as the history of Comico, the comic company. Matt Wagner provides a special Grindel cover for this special must-have collector's item. Now, yeah, so there is um, art on the back by Wagner of Grindel, but the front is just, it just says Black Book. It's, it's very, very dull. And yeah, done somewhat in the style of the Marvel Universe and the DC Who's Who books uh, that were pretty popular in the mid to late 80s. So as you can see, the first thing that shows up here is that 16-page Grindel comic. And here's where I mentioned the back. It just, it ends with the last page of the comic and then all of the publishing indica and also the, um, the credits right there. Um, this book, like I said, it's around $10 for a very fine copy. Um, it's a decent story. If you want to read it, it has been collected again in Grindel Omnibus Volume 1. So you might be better served by just picking up a copy of that. It actually collects all of the Hunter Rose stories that had been published at the time that it came out. Um, it's pretty good stuff. So it then continues with a copy of Next Man Number 3. Um, this was a series I don't know too much about. I know there was a five issue mini series that was published by um, by Comico, and this is obviously issue three of that. Uh, I think that's the exact same issue that I got in the other box, and if that's the case, it'll be a little disappointing. Um, I had one of these boxes when I was a teenager and first getting into Grindel. Um, I got one for cheap at a, at a, I think at a comic convention, actually. And uh, the thing that I noticed about it then, I, it was, I think, the exact same issue of Next Man, because the only time I've ever had copies of this in my possession 
it's when it came from this box. Uh, so this is actually a pretty interesting thing that I've been wanting to read for a while. Um, it's issue number two of Evangeline. So this is actually Chuck Dixon's first comic work, not this particular issue, but this character. Um, so Evangeline started at Comico, I believe, uh, with issue number six of Comico Primer. And then with this standalone series, not too long after. Um, I'm not sure how many issues it ran. To be honest with you, I don't know too much about the character or anything. Um, I think it's a creator-owned work, but I'm not positive. Um, in any event, actually, now that I've opened this box, kind of happy to have that because I haven't come across issues of this in quarter bins, but it's something that I've wanted to read. Uh, issue two of the Johnny Quest ongoing series. This was a really good comic. Um, I know people don't care about Johnny Quest too much these days, and especially they don't care about licensed comics from the 80s, but if you're one of those weirdos that does, uh, you could do worse than reading the comic of Johnny Quest. And I think, um, yeah, so this one has a Wendy Peeney cover, cover, who is most famous as one of the creators of ElfQuest. Um, but there's, there's some pretty interesting cover artists in general that worked on this series. Um, I think my favorite was Dave Stevens supplied at least one cover for the, for the, uh, run. Um, Robotech, the new generation issue eight, uh, which is, um, it's Robotech comics. I mean, they're not, they're, they're actually pretty decent. Like as far as licensed comics go, they're surprisingly good. Uh, the Robotech comics in the nineties, especially the late nineties got pretty bad, um, until Wildstorm took over, but, uh, the ones from Comico were actually pretty good. And so they had, cause, uh, for, for people who don't know, um, or who are too young to know Robotech BS, um, Robotech was a very popular kind of anime series on TV in the 1980s. Um, like most people my age, I was a huge fan of it. And, uh, it was, the whole thing ended up being about 85 episodes long. And what this U.S. production company called Harmony Gold did was they licensed um, the first season of Macross, and they turned that into the first part of Robotech. And by the time they wanted more Robotech for U.S. television, there wasn't another season of Macross or anything, um, or there weren't more episodes for them to license. So they licensed, uh, I think it was Orgus next. And so they turned that season of Orgus into the next part of, uh, of Robotech. And then, uh, I can't remember what the third series was, but they, they licensed a third series, um, again, completely separate and managed to stitch it together because, uh, they had, they had characters and situations and things that were similar enough thematically in the anime that they could be like, oh, well, this is 50 years later and things are like this now. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, Comico had different comic series for each kind of one of those phases or eras of Robotech because although they could kind of stitch it together in show form, um, it worked better in comics, I guess, to have three separate series running. So here's a copy of Elementals. Um, this was Bill Willingham's early superhero series. I don't think it was creator-owned, which is unfortunate. Um, people nowadays probably know him best as the creator of Fables. Uh, it was a very long-running and well-liked series. In the 1980s, he was making his name with Elementals, uh, which ventured into adult territory in the late 80s, early 90s, with the Elemental Sex Specials, which he later ventured even further into uh, with a series called Ironwood um, that he published through Eros Comics before um, going to DC and working on Vertigo titles and doing kind of more teenager and kid-friendly stuff for, for the next couple decades to follow. Okay, and here's an issue of Robotech the Macross Saga. So as I was mentioning, Macross was part one of, of uh, Robotech. <laughs> and so that was kind of where Comico's publishing venture with them started, and it was as they added other series that other series got added in. Um, issue six of Grindel. This is Grindel Volume 2, uh, which is the ongoing, and this is the one that was drawn by the Pander Brothers. 
Um, if you haven't read the Christine Spar Grendel story, it's really, really good stuff. So I would highly recommend picking up these issues. And just notice, um, you know, even now, again, this is 32 years later, and the color and the paper quality and everything looks brilliant. And I, I can tell you from the condition of the packaging on these, they weren't stored in great condition. But um, the, the Grindel colors were actually painted. Um, so it shows up better on some of the other covers and some of the other interiors, but uh, it's, it's a gorgeous series. Um, next up, Justice Machine. This was a creator-owned uh, character that bounced through, I think, about five different publishers through the 80s and 90s. I'm not sure where he is nowadays, but back in the day, um, Justice Machine, especially in the 80s, was a very popular character. And he was one of the kind of mini tentpoles of Comico. And then finally, an issue of Star Blazers. Um, so that was their other major kind of anime license after the Robotech stuff did so well. Um, they started doing Star Blazers as well. There were a couple of other companies that did the same thing. Like 80s television anime licenses were big on uh, with every publisher that could basically do them. So I promised I would show you the poster. Let me unfold it now and we'll take a look at that. And then uh, I think we'll say goodbye for now. So this poster was drawn by uh, Ken Stacy. If you're not familiar with him, he's um, a pretty amazing artist, I would say. And uh, this was pretty much the entire collection of, um, of Comico characters at the time. So let me zoom out a little bit here for you. See if we can get the whole thing in here. Oh, you can see a bit of my floor mass. Um, so this has everything. It has, uh, starting at the right, uh, or at the left, I'm sorry, we have the Elementals characters. And there's Justice Machine. Here we have all the Johnny Quest characters. That's Christine Spar. Uh, this is an invid from Robotech. We have a bunch more Robotech stuff all through here from all three different series. And then we have uh, Kevin Matchstick, the, uh, the main character of Mage. Um, I think that's a character from Star Blazers, I'm not certain. This is Ginger Fox, which is actually one of the more interesting books that was kind of, I think there was just a graphic novel and a four issue miniseries that came out from Comico at least, but it was kind of a big thing in the 80s. Uh, it was a fashion model series. I, I'll confess I haven't read it. It's one of the early works from Mike Barron, though, so I'm curious about it. Um, and then finally, we have Mirth from the Mage series. So, so there you have it. Um, that's the poster. Now, amusingly enough, I've seen this poster alone listed on eBay for like 30, 40 bucks, which is crazy to me. Because as I said, I found these each for about, they were $5 each, and the shipping on them was, oh, what was it? Uh, well, for the two of them, it came to a little over $10. Um, after I bought the last two from that particular dealer, I noticed there were only two left on eBay. One of them was going for 30 one of them was going for 40 but I'll tell you from experience, if you hunt around, you shouldn't have to pay more than about $10 a piece for these, which is what they originally sold for. Um, oh, that reminds me. I apologize. I told you I would show you the comics that were in the other one that I got. And so we'll go through those really quickly now. Um, you'll notice this actually comes with the correct issue of Coming Attractions, number nine. Um, or sorry, Comico Attractions. And so I didn't flip through the last one. They talk about this having original art. It doesn't really. So this is actually a page from the Mage <coughs> interlude. It was a two-page spread from the Mage interlude that shows up in, uh, I want to say Grindel issue 18, something like that. But as you can see, it's basically just a newsletter. Um, the same information, in fact, shows up in color in the regular printed issues, but it's, it's just the upcoming stuff for the month from Comico. Um, so again, we have another, couple, uh, another copy of um, Grendel the Devil's Vagary. 
the exact same issue of Next Man. At least we have a different issue of Robotech the Macross Saga. Same issue of Robotech the Masters. So as you can see, again, this was Comico finding a way to repackage and get rid of a bunch of junk back issues that were sitting in their warehouse. Uh, same copy or same issue of Robotech New Generation. <sighs> same issue of Johnny Quest. At least it's a different issue of Grendel. And a different issue of Justice Machine. Different issue of Elementals. Same issue of Star Blazers. And instead of uh, Evangeline, issue three of Fathom, which this was a. Um, Fathom was a uh, three issue miniseries spinoff from Elementals. So anyhow, uh, that is both of the boxes. Thank you very much for your time. Please like and subscribe. And uh, I promise in the near future a lot more content, um, much better produced videos. We're going to get into some really interesting stuff from all throughout comics history. Um, and yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And especially would love to hear your thoughts on the upcoming videos. So please stick around, uh, like and subscribe. And I promise a lot of interesting content is right around the corner. Thank you, everybody.